Truth tables. A truth table can be used to display the possible truth values of a compound statement. We will create the truth table for the compound statement P and Q as an example. We start by labeling the columns of the table with the propositional variables that appear in the statement, followed by the statement itself. So we'll need a column for P, a column for Q, and a column for the compound statement P and Q. We then use the rows to run through every possible combination of truth values for the propositional variables, followed by the resulting truth values for the compound statement. For the truth assignment that assigns true to both P and Q, the result is that P and Q is true. If P is true and Q is false, then P and Q is false. If P is false and Q is true, P and Q is false. If P and Q are both false, P and Q is also false. Let's also look at the truth tables for the other logical connectives that we're familiar with. P or Q, P implies Q, P if and only if Q, and not P. Since P or Q involves a binary connective, in other words, there are two propositional variables, the truth assignments are the same as in the last example. True, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. The same goes for the implication and the biconditional. The negation, however, is a unary connective, and therefore it only involves one propositional variable, so there are only two truth assignments, true and false. For the disjunction, true or true is true, true or false is true, false or true is true, and false or false is false. For the implication, true implies true is true, true implies false is false, false implies true is true, false implies false is true. For the biconditional, true if and only if true is true, true if and only if false is false, false if and only if true is false, and false if and only if false is true. And finally for the negation, not true is false, and not false is true. For statements involving just one propositional variable, such as not p, the truth table requires two rows, one row for each truth assignment of p, true or false. Notice how for p, there are just two different truth assignments, true or false. As an example, we have the negation. For statements involving two propositional variables, such as P and Q, the truth table requires four rows, as there are four possible combinations for truth assignments of P and Q. True, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. Notice how we have four different truth assignments here. As an example, we have the conjunction. Let's look at what happens with three propositional variables. An easy way to fill out the truth assignments is to start with the first column, make half of the rows true, and the other half false. For the second column, we'll alternate between two trues and two falses. Two trues, two falses. And for the third column, we'll alternate among one true and one false. True, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. Notice that when there is one propositional variable, we have two rows. 
for two propositional variables, we have four rows. And for three propositional variables, we have eight rows. Do you see the pattern? Two is two to the one. Four is two to the two, or two times two. Eight is two to the third power, or two times two times two. So in general, a truth table with n propositional variables will have two to the n rows. Let's look at an example. If p is true and q is false, what is the truth value of p and q? Well, let's just look at the truth table for p and q. And in particular, we'll look at the row where the truth assignment is that p is assigned true and q is assigned false. We then see that p and q is false. P and Q is equivalent to true and false, which is equivalent to false. We can see this symbolically by putting the truth values of the propositional variables under each propositional variable. So under P we'll put a T for true, under Q we'll put false, and the result is that the conjunction is false. Let's look at a more advanced example. Let P, Q, and R be propositional variables with P and Q true and R false. Compute the truth value of not P or not Q implies R. Let's start with the statement and let's replace each propositional variable by its truth value. So we're replacing P by T, Q by T, and R by F. Now, we'll use the truth table for the negation to evaluate not t. Notice how we're looking at the first row here. The negation of true is false. Next, we'll look at the truth table for the implication. In particular, we need the fourth row. False implies false is true. Finally, we look at the truth table for the disjunction, in particular the third row, and we see that false or true is true. So the result is that the truth value of this compound statement is true. We can shorten this a bit by jumping right to the step where we replace the negations of the propositional variables by the negations of the given truth values. So since P and Q are true, we can replace not P and not Q by false right away. That just saves us a little time. Let's look at a little bit quicker method. Starting with the given compound statement, we can replace not Q by false because Q is given to be true. Let's look at the truth table for the implication, in particular the last two rows. Notice that in the last two rows, the first column is false, and the result is true regardless of what happens in the second column. So we don't even need to know what R is here to know that the implication is true. And now let's look at the truth table for the disjunction, in particular the first and third rows where the truth value in the second column is true and we see that the result is true. We didn't even need to know what the truth value of not P was to get the answer. Here's a nice quick visual way to do this problem. Replacing Q by its truth value T, the negation of T is F. The implication F implies anything is always T. And finally the disjunction of anything with T is T. So we see that the answer is T. 
let's finish up with a full truth table solution. Writing out the whole truth table can be a bit tedious, but it will always guarantee us that we'll get the answer in the end. So we're going to start by labeling each of the first three columns with our given three propositional variables. Notice that since there are three propositional variables, we're going to need two to the three equals two times two times two or eight rows. Remember how we filled out our truth assignments? Half T's followed by half F's in the first column. Then we alternate between two T's and two F's in the second column. And for the third column, we simply alternate TF, 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 TF. We now need to label our other columns with the compound statements that we're going to need to build up our final compound statement. We're going to need not P, not Q, not Q implies R, and finally, the statement we're interested in, not P or not Q implies R. We'll use the first column, labeled P, to figure out how to fill out the column labeled not P. Since the first four rows have T's in it under P, the first four rows of not P are going to have F. Similarly, the last four rows under P are F, so the last four rows under not P will be T. We can do something similar for the next column. We use the Q column. The negation of true is false. The negation of false is true. The negation of true is false. And once again, the negation of false is true. For the column under not Q implies R, we're going to use the columns for R and not Q, but make sure that we look at it in the right direction, going from right to left in this case. Since true implies false is the only time we get false, we may as well find those first. Those occur in the fourth and eight rows. And then we can fill in the rest with T's because all other possibilities give us T when dealing with the implication. Finally, for the last column, we're going to need the columns labeled with not P and not Q implies R. Since this is a disjunction, if any column has a T in it, the result is T. So let's fill all those out. And we notice that there's just one row left, the row that has both falses. Since false or false is false, we can fill that one in as well. Finally, let's answer the question. The question has P and Q true and R false, so we look at the appropriate row, which is the second row, and we see that the final answer is true.